guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to my world. My name is Lynn Zabu, as usual. And this channel is so much about my travels, my inspirational stories, my everything, just everything. My world. Things as they happen in my world. Anyway, today I am back in Tororo, in Kisoko village. I came with uh, Sala Tourist and of course Kim Yuji. Uh, to check on Miss Onyango, remember that lady we built a home for, and then to check out another lady and see what we can possibly do to change her life. My goal is to make sure that somebody has a home at least every single year, for now. Maybe if the channel grows bigger, we can make it even bigger. So what's your job? To just subscribe and to watch the videos, like the whole of it. <laughs> that is your contribution towards this very human, human act. So today, me and Kim and Salah, we managed to get a few things, a few things in this car like a lot of stuff okay not a lot but yeah and uh we are going to be distributing all these things to the people around here to specifically three families i think and um yeah i also have a garden which i am excited to show you guys in just a few so sit back relax get a cup of coffee and enjoy this video So, like I said, I have a little garden, a small garden, and there are a few ladies there doing me a favor that I couldn't do for myself. So I'm taking for them some water and uh, a few junk bites. I am also taking them out. These pineapples. Because they've been working so hard. So let's see. And of Is course, nice? this one is is my usual sun savior. Ah, but my hair is not doing it justice. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. So now we can prevent the sun a little bit. <laughs> Over there. So, we are all set, we are going to meet them in the garden, they are already doing their job, and these sacks are going to, so, I need this so bad, <laughs> I did it so bad because my throat was burning, you have sugar cane, so guys, <laughs> we have arrived in the garden, and this is my cassava, like I am so proud of Like, look that side, and then this side, and trust me, there is a lot of cassava here. I do not know how many sacks to expect, but I know there are going to be more than 10 sacks, <laughs> inshallah. And then, um, now I have to go and fill some, so, uh, because I came late, when they have already, you guys, the speed they've used. To clear out all this piece of land. Jesus! Like how fast was that? Are they like kind of machines or something? This was fast, you know? But anyway, they have done a great job. But cassava is everywhere in the garden. And now we have to collect it. And put it in the sacks. And take it home where it has to be peeled. And then we will lay it on the sun. But first... Uh, let's uh, let's get the breakfast ready for these ladies because they're very hungry. Come on. Bali ba meka? So, 
So I just had to buy for them just something to put in their stomach and then the pineapples and then the water as we clear the garden then Salah Tourist is going to cook for us. <laughs> it is always a, a hit when she cooks. So now I'm going to peel the pineapples for them because I want to make sure they are hydrated, I want to make sure they are happy. Uh, yeah, whoever works deserves to eat. <laughs> Ono tamu nyigi da mtoke, che magadeko msa John. Mama ngon nyiri da. Mama ngon nyiri da. Kale nkubi da kabai. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. So guys, <laughs> the job is almost done. I don't know how many sacks I'll get still, but I can tell you the cassavas came out nice and big. Uh, I think this marks the end of my garden today <laughs> right here and um, you can see all the other sacks in the background and now the locals have brought the cows to eat these leaves the cassava leaves yeah <laughs> so they brought in their animals to eat the cassava leaves which is okay quite nice frankly speaking and I've had the most hard-working ladies I've had the most hard-working team today I'm very tired, but we still have to cook and we still have to peel this cassava and we... Ah! Damn! <laughs> so, wish me luck. So guys, I've been eating <laughs> cassava for I don't know how long. Um, this is already four bags of cassava down. And uh, the ladies are going to peel all this cassava. And then later, it will turn into something like this. So this one is almost ready to turn into cassava flour. And then later, it will be turned into cassava bread. Now, um, a little bit about the cassava. I started this about a year ago. And um, I've gotten some money off already. <laughs> And this is what I have left. Um, so I think I've gotten about 15 bags so far. I don't know how many dry ones that I will get. And it is usually very nice to sell it when the cassava is dried because dried cassava is a, a little bit more expensive than the raw cassava. Uh, cassava is mainly the main food that is grown around this area. They grow mainly peanuts, cassava, uh, maize, simsim, and millet. Yes, that's those are the things that they grow mostly here. So, give me a comment on how you find this video so far because, yo, it's going to be a long one. Because right about now, I'm heading to check on Mamonyango's house and, you know, See what we have left there and this saucepan is going to be used for collecting all the cassava maybe i'll give you a little 
bit of details soon. Soon, soon. <laughs> So guys, um, about the same time I came to check on Mamo Nyango, there is this very hard-working lady that I met many, um, not officially met. So she she's lame. She has a, I think she's not not I think she's disabled, and I find it very disturbing that she has a lot of grand daughters and grandsons and she's living in a very not so comfortable place my goal or my dream was to make her next online with uh, putting a roof over someone's head every single year but I'm not making that dream come true yet but today I also made sure to bring Sala tourist here so she can see her uh, because she loves the things I love, because she's very supportive, because she inspired me to do this thing in the first place. So Kim and Salah Tourist were so kind enough to come with me so we can check on this lady. And um, yeah, let's see what you can find and then you can officially meet her and get to know her name. And you leave me a comment if you know we can do something for her if we wait it's all up to you guys so come with me so guys this is her home <laughs> this is her home what i like about her home is that it's very 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 clean but if you want to know the other details you might have to visit Sala Tourist's channel, but where are they? This is her garden and that one. So you can tell she's a very hard working woman, but she's also very disabled. Those are mangoes, but we don't have mangoes on today. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> so guys, these are her grandchildren. And as you can see, they're eating cassava bread. That is cassava bread. I don't know what this is. Binobichi. Butiko. Yeah, they're eating mushroom and cassava bread. Kate gwenga toria. Sometimes she cooks from here. But this is very dangerous. Because she uses firewood to cook. And this is in the house, so... That's the window, which is full of holes. Ah, it is just so, 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 so sad. Um, I've been helping Sarah to do the peeling because it turns out I'm the most hardworking girl. <laughs> and um, we are peeling cassava and we already finished uh, peeling the matoke. So the main reason as my I wanted to make sure that because she has disabled legs and water in this village especially during the rain uh, the dry season water is very 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 far away from her reach so I wanted to buy for her a tank 
I wanted to buy for high tank since uh, water is very far away from here, especially during the dry season. You know, when it's rainy season, you can collect some water somehow slowly. Uh, but during the dry season, it's difficult for her to fetch water because her grandkids are very little. They can't fetch a lot of water. And then, so, but some, my, my friend or oh, Mama Caro told me she cannot, I can't do that for her because, first of all, these iron sheets are going to go off at any time. You can see they are very old, they do not have enough, how do you call them, Biriji? <laughs> how do you call them? Like they do not have enough nail, they are not strong enough, so they can go off any time. And she uses, um, she uses like old, old cassava stems to hold the iron sheets down. And that means if you buy the tank, People are going to come and steal the tank away. If they don't steal the tank away, they will steal the water. So now I don't know what to do. I'm confused. But you guys can let me know what you think would be the best idea. Because I feel like she's hard working. She gets her food. She does a lot of stuff on her own. But then, like I need to be able to solve the water problem for her. I really need to. Guys, like, um, this is this is the how do you call this one? The one that she uses to collect the vare. The vare, the one she uses to collect a bit of water, but then the water will, will end up coming out that way. So if you look at this, at this, looks like it can fall all any time. Like this is. The distance between this and that, there's just a few nails inside, and when it's very windy, it's not the best of situations. Um, as you can see, well, she has a relatively decent door, but this is not the door that is so safe that if a thief came and they're serious, they wouldn't break. You know, so if I bought uh, a small tank. For her maybe to put in the house, you can already see like the wall is like bent <laughs> already. Um, this wouldn't be enough place for her to to keep it, and it is also very dangerous because she's cooking from the house, and kids can easily get you know burnt. And looks like this is also the same place they are using to sleep, also the same place they are using for storage. Also, you know people, like when the fire catches the house, you don't die of the fire first, you die of the, the smoke, you die of the smoke. So you can see, you can see the house, the iron sheets inside already look, you know, they look already black. That is because of the smoke. And you can see here, like when it rains, rain comes straight like when it rains so if it rains like the way it's been raining for the past few days i don't know what she will do um it's it's just and i think she's using this for storage she's using this for storage and she has goats that's where she the goats stay and she has firewood and uh, the bed i think is spoiled so i think i'll start with repairing the bed this is where she keeps her cups ah, hi guys the smoke alone will kill her i i i hate showing my emotions because people around me i don't never see that side of me but as you can see this is not a proper way for a human being to live, especially because of her age and because of her responsibilities, we'll have to do something. And then from outside, by the way, she lost her husband and he's laid just right there. May he so rest in peace. 
I need to look at the house right now. Like, there are holes. You can see through into the house. And then the rain, of course, is washing away. It's, it's washing it away slowly by slowly. Those of you who saw the way we were building Mamonyango's house, um, we used the same technique, but we made sure to plaster the wall so that the rain does not go through and also to give it a long period of time for the house. But I think this house has been standing here for ages. <laughs> so definitely there is no, there is no life left in this wall. So, you know, before something happens to kill her or destroy her, I think it would be just human for a community like mine to think about something which we can do to you know, change her life. Uh, I think now that we have been... I think now that we have seen Madame Grace, because I really need you to tell me what your thoughts about this very topic is in the comment section below. I'm going to show you the example of what I mean when I say we need to help her give her a home. We are sloping down to check Mama Nyango after checking Madame Grace's house. Guys, if you have a proper roof over your head and a bed and your children have proper decent meals, pass your hands in your face and say, <laughs> she, she's not like a very pity self woman she's up and active regardless of what her disabilities are and that is what is motivating me to make sure that you know she has a better place to sleep so come with me and let's head to Mamo Nyango's place now to show you Mamo Nyango's story again. That this is the very, very, very last time I'm showing you about this, guys. So bear with me. So as we predicted, it's already... You can see? You see this? You see that? It's also the same here. It's the same here. The house is leaking. It's almost falling in, like almost falling in. But I noticed that lately they are, use, they are using it to cook. I think this is going to be the new kitchen. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's going to be the new kitchen. So for those of you who are new to this channel, you can go through some of the videos and they have me Sakelo or Mamunyango. You can go through some of my videos and you will see where or how far we've come to get to this point. And this used to be our old house. I think now it's going to be the kitchen. But like, see, imagine we did not put up the other place. What would be happening right now? You can see how the termites were, you know, the snakes were hiding in there. You can see the whole house is basically going down slowly but steadily and surely. The other thing I've liked is she has tried to make a simple compound here which I told her to make and she made and I'm so proud of her for that. Uh, so, this is our new house. I know you've seen it already, but you're going to see it for the very last time. Uh, unfortunately, the kids broke one of the windows and we're trying to fix it. But, um, yeah, for those of you who want to know the whole story of how we built this house, how we got to this house, maybe we can do something like this for Madame Grace, for Miss Grace. Uh, my Grace is a widow, you've seen it through the video, but I really am dying to do for her something like this. 
So this is the girls' bedroom. They are already sleeping here and keeping most of their stuff here. Um, this is the living room, even though they don't have the chairs. And they've already pinned the Jesus poster up there. <laughs> ah, this is the store. She's keeping her hole up there. That's how we keep our holes down here in Africa. You can see this is where she's supposed to keep her food, but she's also putting shoes. So I don't know how these two are adding. Um, yeah, this is her bedroom. I don't, you know, you guys remember the story about this bed <laughs> and everything. So looking back at my life and you guys have been an amazing audience. You have been very, very, very amazing. Thank you so much for supporting Lin Zabu and all her endeavors. Thank you so much for being part of my world. Like I do appreciate it. And uh, I guess that marks the end of today's video. And I know it's been long. So congratulations if you have watched it up to this very end. I love you so much. And please keep subscribing, keep sharing, and keep hitting that notification bell. So that every time I post a video, you get to see it. Other than that, let me see you in my next video.